Hello everyone and today we're going to be talking about rotator cuff tears and in particular we're going to talk about a supraspinatus tear which is one of the most common tears that we see in clinic. So what is a supraspinatal tear or rotator cuff tear? So what we're talking about is a muscle that sits across the top part of the shoulder blade in an area called the supraspinatus fossa and it runs through underneath the acromion hood or the acromion process onto the lateral anterior aspect of the shoulder or the upper anterior portion of the humerus. So what we have, generally speaking, is an over-articulation in this direction or backwards, which causes a frictioning between the space, between the acromion process and superior border of the lateral aspect of the humerus. This causes a friction of the tendon material in between, and that can irritate the tendon and or cause a tear. Now commonly with this, we can also see an osteophyte that sticks down on occasion that can also cut in towards the tendon to cause that injury as well. We have different types of tears. Uh, for example, we have a partial thickness tear, which usually is treated quite successfully in clinic, or we can also have a full thickness tear, which may be referred for alternative interventions. interventions. So to test for the differences between those, we have what's called the zero degree lateral abduction test is one common test that we use, and the Job's drop arm test is another common test that we use. So for example, our lateral abduction test is to determine if we have a partial thickness tear. So the patient leaves their arm sideline. We place our arm to the side on the proximal end of their elbow, and then we ask the patient to push laterally outwards towards my hand. If they're in, able to do so, it can indicate a tear. Now generally what we do is add resistance as they press out, and respectively, the more resistance they offer, the less serious the injury is. But if they apply pressure, they have pain between 0 to 20, 30 degrees, it would indicate an injury to the supraspinatus tendon. Mid-range between 20 to 30 can indicate an injury towards the supraspinatus muscle itself. Start or end range would usually be the tendon that we're talking about. Now, to differentiate a full versus partial thickness tear, what we would do is passively bring the arm up to 90 degrees. We would ask the patient to hold the arm. Now we place our hand under their elbow, if they're unable to hold the arm, what tends to happen is the patient can't hold it, they drop the arm, we would catch it before it falls and then passively assist it back down to neutral just so the patient doesn't get injured any further. That test would then indicate that we have a full thickness tear over a partial thickness tear. Thanks for watching.